Hey everyone, it's Connor from Coifin here. Today I'm going to highlight the holdings matrix, which was a popular feature request from Coifin users, and it's the latest feature update for model portfolios. Coifin's model portfolio holdings matrix offers a simple look at what's inside of your portfolio, breaking down each fund to show you exactly which stocks you own indirectly through those funds, plus how many of each stock you own directly. In layman's terms, it provides an x-ray look through into the underlying exposures of each fund, including equities and bonds. To demonstrate this, I will go over to the model portfolios section over on the left hand side here. You can see I have one open, so I'll go back to the summary page with all of my different models. And I have created a portfolio here, which is just 100% SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. So previously, we would show you the high level or aggregate exposures of a fund. So we only have the S&P 500 in this portfolio, but we can still see the industry, the sector, the regional and country breakdown as well. If this fund had fixed income exposure, we would break down the sectors there as well as credit quality and maturity. Right now, I actually have this set up with the S&P as a benchmark, so you won't see any difference on the over or underweight column. With Holdings Matrix, we now break down the individual constituents of that fund as well. So I'm going to go over to Holdings Matrix here, and we can see that we only have one fund in the portfolio, but what it's showing me is every single individual security in that portfolio, as well as the weighting. Now, if I had another ETF in here, so let's go to the edit creation flow, and I'm going to add QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100, contains more of a tech influence, and we'll equalize those weights and save the changes. So now we can see the individual positions where there might be overlap between these two funds as well as all the individual positions as well. So Microsoft up here, for our portfolio, we have a 7.93% weighting. Both of the funds hold that. And here's the contribution from each fund. So 4.4% from QQQ, 3.6% from SBY. Up here at the top is the weighting of those funds in our portfolio, both 50%. And we can scroll down here and see everything in there. Or we could search for individual names as well. So if I type in Visa, I can see that only SPY has exposure to Visa and we're capturing about 50 basis points there. Now let's add an individual security to this portfolio just to demonstrate one more time. And we'll change these fund exposures for the SPY and the QQQ to 40. And we'll say that we have a 20% direct position in Microsoft. Now what we're going to see is our total exposure is just over 25%. 20% of that comes from a direct holding in Microsoft. And then we have another 6% or so coming from those funds. So we can see there's quite a bit of overlap here. Now let's take a look at a bit more interesting portfolio. You can see here that we have a bunch of different equity and fixed income funds, as well as a few individual positions. So there's a bit more going on here. The matrix columns up here are going to show you the funds in your model portfolio while the rows dictate the stocks, bonds, and options within those funds. The percentage of portfolio column here is going to show you your total concentration. So we can see 6.86% is in NVIDIA. And the rows across here are going to show you the attribution from each fund or direct ownership. So here we can see we own NVIDIA. We have a 5% position, but we're also capturing another 2% from SPY, QQQ, and other funds. You can sort by these columns as well. So if I take JNK, which is a high yield corporate debt ETF, if I sort by that, I'm going to see all the individual bonds that we have exposure to here. And we can see that most of these are only being exposed to via the JNK ETF. So when you have a lot of funds in your portfolio, you're obviously going to have a lot of individual underlying securities. So scrolling through this table might be cumbersome. You can use this search feature. If I type in ABT for Abbott, I can see that we have direct equity exposure and then a bunch of bonds as well. Now, speaking to some of the use cases here, one of them may be managing overlap and concentrations. Suppose your largest direct holding is a 7% stake in NVIDIA. The holdings matrix may allow you to see that you actually have 12% exposure if 5% of your portfolio is invested through funds. If you prefer a lower allocation, you can then manage your direct investment accordingly. It will also help you find unwanted exposures. So if a stock has fallen 20% in the last week or so and is negatively highlighted in the news, and you feel the thesis is breaking down, you can track this exposure and find which funds own it and make a decision from there. It will also help you assess diversification benefits of funds. So if you're using a US large cap value fund to balance out US growth stocks, the holdings matrix can show you if the strategy is effectively reducing concentrations or if there's unexpected overlap. 
that does it for this video. I wanted to just briefly introduce the holdings matrix. We have a lot more work we're doing on model portfolios, and we look forward to introducing those updates to you soon. As always, you can reach out to us on Twitter at Coifin Charts. You can comment in the comments section below, or you can email our help desk, which is help at coifin.com. Thank you.